Okay, we are now live. Thanks. Uh, should we wait a moment and let, uh, it looks like some people are joining us. Let's wait another minute. We are, let's say we have two attendees, uh, oh, Mac and Betty. Let's wait another minute and then we'll, um, we'll welcome everyone officially and, and talk about the, pro, you know, the, the conversation we're going to have today. Uh, oh, look, we have a few folks. Oh, that's great. I think we'll wait till 12.01, which is just, to, just about to happen. Well, why don't we begin? Let's see. Can you all hear me okay? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our Red Feather Lakes community conversation. I appreciate you all taking the time to participate in this Zoom webinar meeting. Uh, my name is John Kafalis. I'm the commissioner from who resides in District 1. And I think, as you all know, that we are uh, we represent the entire county, the, the entirety of Larimer County, which currently has about 360,000 people. Uh, today, our featured guest is uh, Heidi Pruis. Uh, I'll turn it over to her in a moment. She can introduce herself and her title. And our goal is to provide you with an update on our Climate Smart Larimer County initiative. And you know we're in this phase two community engagement and so forth. So that's the uh, the primary focus of this uh, this afternoon. And then I can provide some updates with the time remaining or if people have specific uh, questions. So Austin, is there anything you need to share as far as how people can engage with Q&A or chat or raise hand features? Unless uh, anybody has any questions at the bottom of your screen, you will see that there's a raise hand button. Simply put that up and then I can let you speak if you'd like to speak. Also, you can type directly into the chat um, and we should be able to see that. And finally, there's a QA. and a If you feel so inclined, you may use that. I personally suggest just using the raise hand option since it's such a small group. Uh, but if you do have any questions, you don't know how to use the system, please put it in the chat. I'll be more than happy to answer them while the commissioner and Heidi uh, go on with their presentation. Thank you very much, Austin. So with that, uh, again, welcome to everyone. It looks like we have about six participants, which is great. And I'll turn it over to, um, Oh, and hello, Mac. Nice to see your message there. Um, Heidi, I'll turn it over to you if you would be kind enough to introduce yourself and uh, we'll get into the presentation. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for inviting me to this community conversation. Um, as the Commissioner mentioned, my name is Heidi Pruis. I am the Climate Smart and Sustainability Program Manager for Larimer County. Um, I'm going to share my screen here so that we can um, go through a little video and um, if I can get the slide to go. Here we go. Um, so hopefully you can see that. Um, what I would like to do for you is just review this really brief agenda and I anticipate only spending about 12-15 um, minutes of your time so that we can ask us questions and have dialogue. I'd like to share with you why it is we're talking about the Climate Smart Initiative right now and an overview of the program. Um, we are nearing the end of our public engagement, but I'll share with you how you can get involved. And I did drop the links into the chat as we go along here. So why is Larimer County talking about Climate Smart at this point in time? Um, living in Larimer County, you are well aware of the uh, natural disasters that are in that are occurring um, and the fact that the impact that those natural disasters are having seems to be amplified year over year. 
it's not just the natural disasters that are being amplified, but just our day-to-day -day living is, in, is experiencing an increase of things that impact our health and the way in which we live and work here in the county, like extreme heat days, prolonged and extended droughts, and just the air quality that can impact you if you have some sort of a health condition, but also just if you have a job that takes you outside every day or you're in a living um, uh, situation in which those extreme weather conditions are impacting your everyday life. We also know that there are things that we can do about the impacts that we have on the climate. We may not be able to solve every problem, but certainly we can mitigate, which means that we can reduce those um, impacts that we have in our daily life on how the climate is or is not changed. But we can also um, concentrate on adaptation actions and how it is that we are going to become more resilient into the future with regard to the impacts that these changing climate um, situations are having on us. And so when we put those mitigation and adaptation efforts together, this is where a plan is born. Um, we are in the second phase of this overall initiative because the first phase was a framework document that was adopted by our county commissioners in January of last year. So it's a little over a year old. And that framework document suggested a suite of strategies that a variety of departments came up with within the county. But their overarching recommendation was that we go out to the public to hear from you what it is that are the impacts that you're realizing and what it is that you would like us to prioritize as actions going forward. So that's the phase that we're in right now today, phase two. This will ultimately lead us into phase three, which is the development of the plan. The plan itself will have not just detailed implementation steps, but it will include goals and measures for how it is we're gonna know if we're successful or not, if we need to pivot or not. We will be conducting um, community outreach, community engagement through the entire process. So just because this phase says community outreach doesn't mean we're gonna stop after this phase. It's just that it's the concentration of where we are today. If I back up a little bit and just share with you a little bit about what's in that framework document, that phase one document, you'll see that there are six bulleted areas here that as you read through these, these look like county departments. And it's true, that's how that original framework development was, um, was implemented, was phrased, was getting input from each of these departments about how we can move forward. But that's not always translatable to us, how we live our everyday lives and or to our partners who we might wanna work with. So what we did is we took a little bit of uh, detail around um, what does what does Larimer County look like right now? So the statistics that you're going to see on the next couple of slides share with you what we know about Larimer County today. We know that 60% of the people who live here also work here, which means that any um, programs, expenditures of funds, whatever we do here in Larimer County will really impact Larimer County because we live and work here. But we know that we can, we have room for improvement as you see the um, smaller percentages with regard to some of our public transportation or our waste diversion, that there's lots of opportunities for improvement here. We also know that our population is increasing and as our population is increasing, we need to understand where it is that we're spending most of our dollars in our effort, which as you see here, 50% of our, our regular income is spent on housing and transportation, which tells us a lot about where there might be opportunities for improvement into the future. We also know that while 50% of Larimer County is owned and operated by some public entity of, of the state or the federal government, that we do have opportunities when it comes to the large percentage of acreage within our farms and ranches in the county and recognizing that we also spend um, quite a lot of time recreating here 
that there's a smaller and smaller percentage of where it is that we live and how we work within the county. So recognizing that a large percentage of our homes are single, single family homes also helps us understand what kind of programs that we can implement going forward. So we took that information together and we, instead of those six categories in the framework, we came up with these four categories. Four categories that maybe help us understand a little bit better about how our actions are implementing, are impacting the climate and how it is that we can improve on those. So we have these four categories that we're concentrating on today. Our homes and economy, how we move around, and that's just not us, but our goods and services as well. Um, nature and land and our well-being. And so we're looking at these four areas as we gather your feedback in the community. There are a couple things that we have already heard. Our first questionnaire um, asked if folks have been impacted by severe weather. And up in Red Feather, of course, you have been. Um, so a majority of folks in our community are saying that we're being impacted by the severe weather. Does it does that mean that it's related to climate change? We don't know. Um, so we need to do a little bit more information gathering and sharing of the information. The other thing that we heard is that when you hear the title Climate Smart Larimer County, you think of a variety of things. And so this chart shows you just that variety of what folks think of when they think of Climate Smart Larimer County. When we, we talk about sustainability, we're talking about not just today, but well into the future. We're talking about our quality of life and resiliency from these um, severe weather impacts. <clears throat> but that fourth one, that innovation column, I thought was really hopeful because that tells me that um, folks in this community are looking for opportunities for improvement, are looking for um, new and innovative ways to um, approach the future. So we are here still in this outreach and engagement phase. And as we finalize this outreach, which I'll show you in just a minute how you can get in, involved, we're gonna compare the information we're, we're hearing from you as the community, what was in that framework document in phase one, as well as looking across the United States at similar counties and saying, okay, what are things we can learn from others what are the priorities in this community? And we're going to establish if those four areas are the right priorities and what implementation actions can go forward. So that's what's coming in the future. So this is the how you can get involved piece. And I know I've talked really fast, but hopefully it wasn't too fast that you don't have questions. Um, in the chat, I dropped in a couple of things that are found embedded within this overall website. So at the top of the screen there, you can see larimer.org climate hyphen smart. And there's all these tabs across the top with lots of information, but get involved is where we want you to go. <clears throat> the questionnaire link that I provided in the chat is shown in the green box that's in the middle of the screen. And then requesting a small work group is something else that you can do right now. This series of uh, public outreach will end about the middle of March. And so the timing is getting shorter and shorter because at some point we need to cut it off so that we can develop our priorities going forward and make the next steps. That doesn't mean that we don't always wanna hear from you. So at the bottom of this page, the Get Involved tabs page is a, form for you to sign up for our newsletter. Our newsletter is what will keep you informed as we go all the way through, not just this phase, but in through phase three. So I encourage you to sign up for that newsletter so that you can keep informed of how we're progressing. Um, there's also a comment form on this slide, as you can see. You can always follow us on social media if that's the way that you like to keep up to date as well. And we are um, providing updates regularly on both Facebook and um, the Twitter account for the county. And that's what I have for you today. I'm looking forward to your questions and, um, and for your participation. Thank you so much. Heidi, thank you for your presentation.
Um, much gratitude. Folks, this is a great opportunity to ask questions. Uh, so we'll pause for a moment and give you that opportunity or offer that opportunity. And I have a couple of questions, but I will wait. Well, uh, let, let me offer a question for consideration and, and maybe that'll generate some more discussion. Um, I know, Heidi, you talked about this, this community engagement process that we've undertaken since last fall, I think, or you know, the end of last year is kind of phase two. Could you provide a little bit more detail about phase three of this uh, Community Smart Lamar County initiative and and how our goal is to develop a, an implementation or an action plan. And I think it's also appropriate to share that we have applied for or will be submitting uh, the FEMA uh, ap uh, grant application. Could you elaborate on that a little bit, please? Sure. Um, this, this phase two, this community outreach was a very short and condensed time frame. Um, certainly not enough time to develop a full implementation plan with partners. One of the things that we know is as we develop an implementation plan, Larimer County as an entity cannot solve all these issues, nor is it appropriate for Larimer County to own and implement all the actions that need to be taken in our, in our county. So what we are hoping to do through this phase is to really produce, okay, in these four buckets, uh, homes and economy, how we move around, our nature and land and our well-being, what is it that we're hoping to achieve by having a plan and implementation steps in each of those categories? And when we identify what it is that we hope to achieve, then we can identify, oh, well, it's gonna require a new program. It's gonna require an expenditure of funds. It's gonna require um, maybe a revision of a rule. It might require a partnership that is the only way to implement a certain project. Let's just take um, uh, implementing overall solar across the county. Every jurisdiction within the county has different arrangements with regard to where it is they get their money, their energy, and how it is that those systems are operated. So having partnerships to identify how it is we can service the county as a whole are going to be required before we can um, know that take some goal and some measurement that this is how we're achieving it. So we certainly need to take the time in phase three, that implementation plan, to identify the steps and identify the partners. Um, that's why we've requested assistance from FEMA um, for our grant program, because this uh, additional influx of funds will allow us to um, assemble groups that more groups maybe that can help us work through who are the partners, what's the right measure, what's the right implementation step. Um, and um, that this, these funds will also help us maybe gather some information that we still need to have. What we, I showed you a slide with regard to, we don't know how, if the severe weather impacts are being, what they're being caused by or what's happening there. And we know that the greenhouse gas and emission inventory that the county has conducted in the past is old and things change. Um, so maybe part of that FEMA grant will help us update our information, provide some more um, up-to-date uh, statistics with regard to where it is we are today, but also um, how our how our overall climate issues have changed over time. So we're, we have a little bit of baseline data. Now it's time for us to gather additional funds. So that's what we're going to be focusing on um, in that implementation phase. And as I said, continued feedback from the community through that entire phase will be critical for us making sure that we're um, not only addressing all the issues, but getting all the right partners to the table. Um, 
I, I do see a, a question from Jeff in the chat about the history of other programs and differences between climate wise that the city's doing versus this climate smart program. And so that's the other piece of phase three that is important, um, especially with regard to this, this funding, because we know that where there are existing plans and programs, we don't need to replicate that in that area. There's already a plan there. Um, but where there's not a plan or where there's maybe some conflict or some overlap in between plans, this is an opportunity for us to take a fine tooth comb to those plans, see where it is that we can link together, where can we connect, and where can we realize um, uh, maybe efficiencies of where our dollars are spent if we're each in our own jurisdiction going to implement similar programs. So um, climate wise, right, really right, well, it used to, you know, the climate wise program is no longer functioning the way that it was. It was really um, developed as a climate wise uh, business program. That program in particular is being revamped into a sustainable business program where they're separating out how it is that we understand our energy use from how it is that we can support businesses in doing um, all kinds of sustainable practices in addition to, to energy. So that program's evolving just, and so as that's evolving, maybe there are things that we can replicate countywide that are lessons learned, but maybe there's a different way that Red Feather or Wellington or Estes Park or Loveland would like to conduct a similar program. And so those are the kind of things that we're gonna be trying to pull together in phase three to understand where is it that Larimer County can serve the best um, purpose as far as maybe convening partners or maybe taking the lead on a project. And it could be, there are all kinds of categories of projects so it could be um, an education program. Maybe we just need more education on recycling and that's our biggest problem when it comes to recycling. Or maybe it's an expenditure. Maybe it's, nope, we need to put in um, a composting station or a recycling station, a physical place. Maybe it's an expenditure. Or maybe, nope, it's a rule change. Maybe it's, oh, we need to um, define better what we mean by recyclables and make sure that that's put into our system, our overall program. So there's lots of opportunity. Um, this could be a great big almighty plan or it could be, oh, let's link to our existing plans and see where we can gain efficiencies. So that's what we'll see. Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, thank you, Heidi. And if I might add a couple of uh, additional comments, you did a great job in, in response to Jeff's uh, uh, comments or questions just to provide a little bit of context. Uh, so the, the genesis, I suppose, of this climate smart thing, uh, I, I guess I'm, I have some responsibility for that. But when I first started as county commissioner in uh, January of 2019, uh, in, we typically do what we call a board retreat to look at um, a priorities for the commissioners, like annual priorities, uh, in addition to what we do in our five-year strategic plan. But I identified the, uh, the, the importance, I thought, of, uh, of the county getting more involved in, in climate action activities and, and how that's Im impacting our county and our communities. So that's kind of the genesis. And from 2019, I think, to uh, 2021, uh, there was a lot of work being done uh, internally from the various county service areas that you see those six areas and also some community partners. But ultimately we developed a, what we call the Climate Smart Framework Report. And that's about an 80 page report with a big pile of appendices. And in that report, we identified those six areas plus the need for um, a greenhouse gas inventory. And, and if you wanna get into this in more detail, you, you'll certainly, if you go to that Climate Smart web link, you'll, you'll see that. Uh, but that, that's the beginning of all this. And, and our intention was to try to be as thoughtful and deliberate and inclusive as possible uh, and, and not necessarily um, you know, tell the community or private sector folks or others you know, what they needed to do. So we, we've attempted to be very deliberate about this thing. And, and um, 
The framework has a whole bunch of ideas and suggestions and actually raises a whole bunch of questions as well. And, and that's what part of this community engagement has been to make inform people of this document that serves as a framework and, and, and then see what additional ideas we get from the community, you know, what we agree on, what we may not agree on, and so on and so forth. So um, I, I just wanted to provide that context, you know, and I hope that's, I hope that's helpful. Uh, we also have, if you go to the, that climatesmartlammer.org backslash climate dash smart, we also have developed a, uh, an executive summary document, uh, which is about, it's much more readable. Uh, it's a 12 page document, give or take, and it's in English and Spanish. So that, I offer that as, as context. And uh, it looks like Karen has a question. And then I, I had another question on this, and then I wanted to inform uh, Mac and, and our folks from the Poudre Canyon Fire District about uh, some wildfire webinars that are coming up that they might be interested in. Uh, hi, right. Heidi, do you want to respond? Yeah, to, let me uh, let me address you, um, Karen, okay. your questions here, if that's okay. Oh, of course, please. Um, um, so yes, you're right. Your action item is to number one, fill out the questionnaire by March eighth. Thank you so much. And then um, and or. If you'd like to have a small group work group workshop, I can do that on the on a drop of a dime. So if you have a bunch of friends, you want to pull them together, you want to spend an hour with me, we can go through instead of doing the questionnaire, we can do that as well. So that's just an option for you. Um, what you will you can see some immediate results of what the initial feedback has been already. It's already available on the website. And so let me just can I share my screen one more time? And let me just show you how this works. Um, on this slide, can you see this slide here? Okay, um, so this is the slide that I gave you. This is the Climate Smart um, page on the Get Involved tab. As you scroll down, here's the questionnaire and the feedback. These are our workshops. And if you select one of these workshops, you will see um, a presentation pop up. You can flip through the presentation, but if you get all the way down to, um, all right, close your eyes. I don't wanna make you sick. Let's see, let me get to the right, here you go. So we, these were kind of some of the questions that were in your questionnaire, as well as what was in the workshop. Um, when you think of homes and economy and you think of advocacy, what do you think of? And here are the ideas that popped up from the people who attended that workshop um, or that series of workshops. And we had each one of these workshops um, occurred uh, three times. So we had two in English and one in Spanish. And so those results are available for you right now, real time. Um, in addition to that, summary, the first questionnaire summary is down here at the bottom of the screen. Completed, it says completed series one, and you see this the summary um, tab right here. You can click on that and it's a PDF of all the results from the very first questionnaire, except for all the written comments. We had over 500 written comments. And so we are in the middle of putting them together in those four categories. So it makes sense. And so you're not just reading random things <laughs> all over the place. So that is coming. Um, this is on that same page. This is how you sign up for the newsletter. So this is how you will stay involved um, long term over time. So I hope that showing you that on the website is a little bit helpful for you. Um, the other part of your question was about um, when you will hear back the results. So this this part of our community engagement process will end in mid March. Our task force is putting together all the recommendations and we'll be presenting that to the Board of County Commissioners in a final form in June or in May, May. So come May, you will know the results of this part of the first phase two, and then we'll go into phase three. I hope that answers your question. Uh, thank you, Heidi. And, and, and thank you for getting into uh, what the deliverable is with this phase two. And, and the task force is made up of um, community members who have 
uh, who have interest and, and some advisory board folks and others that are helping to serve as a quote sounding board, you know, for some of the input that we're getting. And they've been actually very uh, instrumental in helping to adjust how we approach some of these matters. But I think ultimately we will get a report uh, with the consultants. We have consultants as well as the task force input and the community input. The commissioners will get that in May or so, and that will help inform how we go about you know, this phase three. And by then we should know if we get this, um, if we're able to get this FEMA grant for $400,000 uh, with a 25% match from, you know, from local, from the county. So thank you for that, Heidi. Um, Commissioner, yeah. can I just add for you that um, up there in Red Feather, Darlene Kilpatrick is the representative from Red Feather on the task force. And so if you aren't comfortable talking to me or talking to the Commissioner Kapalas, you can always talk to Darlene and she'll bring out, bring the information back to us as well. Although on most days, both Heidi and I are pretty nice. So uh, hopefully you have some level of comfort talking with us. Um, the only other thing I wanted to ask at the moment, and then I'd like to share this information about this. Uh, I'm, I got an email the other day from the US Forest Service and maybe some of the folks who are directly involved with this already have received this information, but I'll get to that in a moment. I'm wondering, Heidi, a question I have, an additional question is, I believe your title is uh, Climate Smart and Sustainability Program Manager. Could you talk about how we're trying to take a parallel or two-track approach? In other words, you know, ultimately coming up with recommendations about how we deal with adaptation and mitigation stuff in the community, um, and but also how the county as an organization, what we are trying to do in terms of sustainability and energy efficiency and all that, how we have to serve as a good role model. Could you speak to that a little bit, please? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, coming up with an external plan for for the community is definitely a priority, um, but we also know that we need to walk the talk ourselves. And so there is an internal effort going on right now between those departments that were included in developing the framework, but others as well, um, who are coming together and we're identifying in the immediate term this is what we recommend go, doing going forward. Um, as we've been having our discussions, we've come up with the milestone timeline of the things that we've already done so that we can communicate better with you as um, the constituents in the community about we haven't just this, just because we're having this climate smart discussion right at this moment doesn't mean that nothing's happened up until this point. And so we're trying to gather that information in one concise area that will be available for you as well by the spring. And, um, you know, we're talking about a lot of things, not just the, the direct climate change impacts that, that we may or may not be having with our mitigation and adaptation programs, but the larger sustainability realm. How do we include equity, diversity, and inclusion in our discussions? How is it that we're looking at a topic like well-being when it comes to natural disasters, when it comes to um, the air quality that we're breathing or the water quality that we're drinking? How are we um, taking those things into account as a whole. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, um, um, a broadened out structure from just thinking about climate only, we're thinking about sustainability as a whole. Does that help you? Yes, thank you, Heidi. And uh, one last point, then I'll share about this um, wildfire crisis strategy roundtable. I think Jeff brought up a, uh, a good issue, and, and, I, and I believe you more than adequately addressed it uh, regarding um, the relationship between the, the different jurisdictions like the county and the city of Fort Collins. Uh, we, we definitely want whatever we come up with, we want it to align with what's already out there. We certainly don't want to reinvent the wheel. And how do we complement you know, the efforts in the public sector with what's already happening in the private sector as well? So that's important. So I offer one example uh, because uh, it's really important to all of us, and that's air quality. So there have been a lot of discussions recently, and we're coming to um, a place where we'll be uh, making some specific recommendations. But, you know, we, uh, Lamar County is included in the uh, EPA uh, ozone non-attainment region. And, and if you look at today's Colorado, for example, you'll see that um, 
Uh, air quality is a big deal in air pollution. And I think last year we had however many days where we were in serious violation of the EPA standards and so forth. So that's an example where, where we are working closely with the city of Fort Collins to look at you know, what's already in place uh, for monitoring air quality, how it relates to the, the two main contributors of the, you know, the air pollution in our area, in our region, our, our oil and gas. A lot of that is coming from Weld County um, and, and also transportation. So, so for example, on I think April 13th, we have, um, it should be made public, a, a joint work session with the city of Fort Collins. And one of the topics that we'll be discussing is air quality and, and specific ways that we can work together. Uh, the city of Fort Collins is taking the lead on submitting another grant, I, I guess to the EPA or somebody uh, that we're collaborating on that we, if we're successful, we'll get, bring a, a bunch of money to the, to the area that will help with some additional air quality monitoring uh, tools and, and so forth. So I offer that as an example. And, and with that, let me just share this email and I, I can forward it to whoever might be interested or, or Austin can help me with that. Uh, but it's, um, I got this yesterday from the, the Forest Service and it's a wildfire crisis strategy roundtable. Uh, it's, you're invited region two roundtable February 28th and March 7th. And it, in the email, it discusses the purpose of the roundtable is to share information, goals, timelines for the 10 year strategic implementation plan, uh, collect partner and employee input from the plan to inform the plan, et cetera. And there are two other bullet points. And the first day, February 28th, one to 3 p.m. Mountain Time is a kickoff. And, and then the, the second day is round, March 7th is round table. So I wanted folks to be aware of that. I know that we have Mac on from the uh, um, uh, Shambhala Center, and then we have at least two folks on from the uh, the, 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 the Poudre Canyon Fire District. So I, I don't know how I how to this. I can forward this to you to you all I think if you're interested, and maybe Austin, you could help facilitate that. So I wanted to share that. Uh, Mac or Paula or Betty, are you guys interested in getting that information or do you already have it? Here's your chance to say something. <laughs> Mac is being shy today, that's okay. Uh, uh, yes, please. Yeah, I can. I think I have your email. Yes, Paula, thank you very much. I'll, <laughs> okay, gosh. Oh, and Karen, of course. I'll, um, maybe with Austin's help, I'll make sure I think I have all four emails. I'll, I'll get that out right away after we're done. Um, so are there any other questions, uh, comments, suggestions for our Climate Smart and Sustainability Program Manager? I, I think Heidi can stick around for a bit. Uh, and then I'll give a couple of quick updates and see if you have any questions for me. Okay, well then let me just share a couple of things and then open it up for questions. Uh, first of all, in addition to this round table, which, and I'll send that to the four folks who indicated interest. Um, I, I think, well, I know Karen knows this, but starting next month, which I believe is March, <laughs> um, I think our next meeting is scheduled for March 24th. Uh, that'll be in person. And um, hopefully Austin or Karen's already taken the initiative to reserve the community association building, the POA building, because the plan would be to meet there in person uh, on March 24th. Uh, we have invited um, Mark Faffinger and anybody from his team. And Mark will be giving us uh, for the March meeting an update on the, uh, the revised or the updated uh, broadband strategic plan and as I've mentioned to the Red Feather Lakes uh, Planning Advisory Committee folks, I mean, there's a lot of really good stuff that's going on, tangible stuff in terms of the, you know, the County Road 74E and working with Poudre Valley REA uh, to um, actually up upgrade the internet access and what's available to folks. It's still a couple of years away, I think, but we're making really good progress there. So Mark has been invited for that March meeting. 
uh, the April meeting, um, we have invited uh, Kimberly Culp, who is the director of LIDA, the Larimer Emergency Telefo Telephone Authority, as well as our own Lori Hodges. Um, and uh, Lori is the director, of course, of our Office of Emergency Management. Those two or organizations or entities, you know, as an example of collaboration and how we're all in this together, uh, we made an investment, the county did um, two years ago uh, to put some dollars towards the, the uh, purchase or with uh, of the, the um, EOC, the Emergency Operations Center, a state-of-the-art facility and building uh, in Johnstown, near Johnstown or in Johnstown, I guess. So LIDA, OEM, and some other partners are, are, are located there. And, and so we've invited them for April. And then for May, uh, we've invited or will invite uh, the, the person, the planner, the consultants, JVA consultants who are working on the, um, the water wastewater feasibility study. Some of you may be aware that uh, from the federal dollars, the American Rescue Plan Act funds, uh, we received a, 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 a total of about 67, $66 million uh, that, that has to be invested in a way that is COVID related uh, and, and economic impacts, health impacts and infrastructure. So we um, designated $150,000 uh, to pay consultants to look at the options for upgrading the, the water wastewater capacity of the, you know, the Red Feather Lakes area. So in May, if I think the person name is Mandy Rasmussen, we've invited her to come and, and maybe we can get our county engineer there, Mark Peterson. So wanted you to be aware of that. And, and also hopefully you'll hear about it through the Red Feather Lakes Network. There is a community meeting scheduled for June 4th, Saturday. Um, and, and maybe Karen could speak to that, but the, the intent is to provide additional update on the JVA consulting work. We should have some more recommendations by then. Uh, I think it's a, it's a Saturday, June 4th, it might be nine to 11. Uh, and we'll be providing specific upgrade updates on the center line survey a project and, and ways that folks can be engaged as well as the water wastewater thing as well as uh, talking about broadband or whatever else folks want to talk about so be aware of that community meeting uh, i'll pause for a moment and see if there are other questions or comments thanks karen hey karen have you been able to reserve the space for march 24th the poa <laughs> uh, I love it. Thank you. And, and um, uh, again, uh, do folks have any questions of me regarding, you know, topics that you're interested in? Um, I, I, I may also, uh, maybe for the, depending on who comes to these various upcoming community conversations in person, I've also am looking at uh, inviting um, the Forest Service folks, Reagan Cloudman and her team, uh, possibly, and, and even, uh, you know, anybody from the Sheriff's Office to kind of give us an update on some public safety things. And, and also, um, uh, you know, right now, the, uh, the, there's an interim uh, district ranger, Christopher Dahl, D-A-H-L, who is overseeing the Canyon Lakes District, uh, as um, our good friend Katie has moved on to the city of Fort Collins. Uh, I think I was, I, I recall that by April or so, they will have a new director uh, chosen, which for the federal government is pretty fast. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, uh, we may invite those folks and give an update on the summertime and you know concerns that people from Crystal Lakes and Red Feather have raised about you know, recre illegal and inappropriate or unsafe uh, uh, recreational sports shooting. Um, uh, thank you, Karen. And, and I also want to do a shout out, if I may. Um, you know, there is this thing called the Red Feather Lakes PAC, a planning advisory committee. And currently it's made up of 10 folks and um, they can actually take up to um, 13, I think the maximum membership. And we have these PACs to help 
you know, we meet regularly and their, their role is to help inform, uh, you know, the staff and the commissioners about things that matter to them in their area. Uh, and, and there will be a recruitment, a fall recruitment. So folks will have an opportunity to apply for the um, Red Feather Lakes Pack because, you know, technically there are some additional openings. I, I've, I believe I've talked too much, so I'll stop there. Is there anything else that folks want to ask or any updates that they're interested in? Um, I can say that, uh, you know, regarding the American Rescue Plan Act funds, the ARPA funds, you know, we have this immediate needs grant process that initially we um, set aside about a million and a half dollars. As you can imagine, we got more applications um, than dollars available, although we upped that to close to 3 million. And I think Putter Canyon got some funds, the fire district and, uh, and, and some others, uh, Wellington, um, but the immediate needs grants uh, are, you know, a, a bunch of it went to small businesses to help with revenue loss. A bunch of it went to nonprofits. And I know one of the, um, the one of the areas I mentioned is infrastructure. And I believe we uh, approved um, if, uh, up to $250,000 uh, to go to Livermore, uh, the community of Livermore for um, upgrading and making their community hall you know, the community hall that those folks have, ADA compatible, uh, putting in a wheelchair ramp and, and so folks can have better access to that community space. So I, I, I wanted to share that as well. We still have only spent about less than half of the money that we got and we're looking at more long-term projects. And, and, and frankly, I think there's some really uh, great um, potentially transformational stuff that we hope to collaborate with public and private sector, you know, to make real changes. Um, with the, you know, these federal dollars, one-time federal dollars. Well, if, I guess if, uh, if, if there are no other questions or comments, we can probably end early. I, I will send the email out to Paula and, and at least to Paula, I think I might have Betty's email and, and Mac and, um, who is the other? Oh, and of course, Karen. Uh, Karen helps keep me on the keep me honest, and I appreciate that. So, if there's nothing else, we will um, uh, we'll end our meeting, and and certainly thank you to Heidi, to Austin, and all the community folks uh, who take the time to participate in this stuff. Uh, we're doing our best, and 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 we got to stick together as best as we can. Thank you all. Thanks, Heidi.